<laughs> All right, I'm here with the Jared, and we just got back from the Devil Inside, or the, the Foreshadow the, Inside, the new In Excess documentary. <laughs> um, to the, most, <laughs> I like that song. Um, mo a lot of theaters actually got this on a midnight. Um, uh, our, ours didn't. It got a 9:15 screening. Because we're lame. <laughs> or maybe just the employees just didn't want to stay there till two, two or three in the morning. Yeah. Uh, so we went. So we went to the 9:15 screening, and uh, it was actually surprisingly pretty crowded. Yeah. Like we had to sit pretty close to the screen. <laughs> um, and man, am I really glad this movie was crowded because the the <laughs> <laughs> this movie is really, really, really bad. So you got a crowd of people that were disappointed. Uh, Not that they were disappointed. I mean, yeah, kinda, but this was. <laughs> they were disappointed. They were, they because were, well, they yeah, were they, yeah, they were disappointed, but no one was like mad. Well, no, it, it was like mad. They were disappointed in the sense that I, I'm, sh I'm sure that they wanted to see a good movie. I mean, I, I was <laughs> wanting it to be good, but they weren't like. Like me at the end of Transformers Three, they weren't about ready to flip over every car in the parking lot right. or punch through a window or right. something. Like they were laughing, like they were. myself included. We were all laughing yeah. at this movie. The entire theater credits start yeah. rolling. <laughs> credits start rolling. People are on the fl and I'll get I'll get to the end. We'll get to the ending here and here in a bit. But throughout this movie, everyone in the audience, us included. We're laughing. We're at, at this fucking train wreck of a goddamn movie. So the experience in seeing it with a crowd of people, I gotta say, was that was the best part. Yeah, it was an enjoyable. Ex there is there is no way in hell I could recommend seeing this goddamn fucking movie. Uh, there's no way I can justify paying ten some fucking dollars to go see this fucking right, movie. No. But if you do, if you do go see it out of bring curiosity, br yeah, bring some fucking booze, bring booze and hope that you have a crowded audience. So I, I first saw the trailer for this movie in front of, uh, in front of Paranormal Activity three, and the trailer was was the trailer was really good. The trailer made it look like it would be pretty suspenseful, like it would be a decent exorcism movie, and. Uh, and I, I, I do like ex I do like exorcism movies. Um, I'll, I'll give it this credit: the the exorcism scene. See, well, I I like the exorcism scenes. They, they were they were bad. I they mean, were they weren't good. They were uh, they were fun. They were entertaining because um, yeah, because it was pretty bad. It wasn't a good exorcism scene. Like, I can picture. I actually a lot of this movie. A lot of this movie, I can picture, I can sort of be, I can sort of picture being okay if it wasn't shot like a fucking documentary. Yeah. If it wasn't yeah. shot, if it wasn't this mockumentary. Because I, truth be told, didn't know a lot about this movie going into it. Like, I, I saw the trailer in front of Paranormal Activity 3, but that was a really crowded theater, and there were a lot of screams during the trailer, and a lot of talking, and I didn't... I didn't pick up right away that it was like a last exorcism kind of yeah. faux documentary yeah. thing, or at least I, or at least I didn't think that that's what the whole movie was. Right. So I'm watching it, and within the first couple of minutes, I'm like, okay, this is, they're pretending like it's a documentary, and the first half hour, forty minutes, or whatever the movie, I'm watching this thing like, like. You know, if I wanted to watch a documentary of, on this, I would watch a documentary on exactly. this. Exactly. Because the, the ex demon possession, exorcism stuff, I, f I find very, very fascinating. It's a fascinating topic, and it's spooky and creepy. Makes for makes for good movies, and a documentary on this, and I, I, I know there's plenty out there, I've seen a lot of them, but are, would, be much more would be much more interesting and scarier than this movie. Um, if this was shot, you know, like, uh, if this was a very well shot movie, um, it would, I think it, I don't know if it would, I, I don't know if it would have been any good, 
but but I, I probably would have liked it better than its fake documentary documentary stuff because you've got the girl in the movie yeah. who isn't very good. I, um, I think I think really a lot of this movie uh, the because it was shot like a documentary because it was a mockumentary. I I. I thought it was pretentious. I thought it was pretty pretentious to do it like that. I mean, it was. Just I was like, thinking. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, and I, and there are movies that could do that well. That uh, Last Exorcism. I mean, I didn't really like the ending of that movie, but for the most part, I thought it did that. I thought it did that really well. But at, at Last Exorcism did it right in that you had a very charismatic lead guy who was a much better actor who did a fantastic job carrying the movie. Yeah. And even the exorcism scenes were, were done well. The, the possession scenes were, were done well in that. It, the, the movie lost me at the ending, but um, but for the most part, I, I thought it did it fine. So yeah, I think that this subject can be done in a fake documentary style. Um, but the first time it shows the girl in this movie, who's our lead character, who looks like teen Angelina Jolie, um... It's the first time it shows her she's talking to the camera and it looks like an ad. It looks like it looks like an ad for like an acne commercial or something. <laughs> yeah. She's talking to the camera, yeah. you know, kind of like this, Take like off. really really pretty, uh, really attractive, you know, all the makeup on and stuff like that. And I feel like she's I feel like she's talking to me about like antidepressant medication or something. <laughs> like I'm watching a commercial on TV, like like I'm gonna lean over to you and be like, Oh, this reminds me, I need to pick up soap <laughs> Um even showing like pictures of her like during her youth, like here's what I looked like before. And like it's just done really, really badly. Like seriously, this movie's about as convincing as a documentary as Gacy House. <laughs> that was an asylum movie. <laughs> All right, um, so, so let's let's keep going with the movie. Let's let's. Well, like, yeah. So so she so okay. she wants she's doing this her and this this other dude who's like the director of this documentary who looks like B J Novak, um, <laughs> and they're they're doing a documentary about her mother who who killed uh, some clergymen when they were trying to give her an exorcism in 1989 and she's in a in a mental institution in Rome, Italy. Yeah, and when you see the trailer for this movie, it makes it look like that's what this is about. Yeah. Like it's about the mother being possessed right. and they have to give her an exorcism. That's that's what the trailers of this movie look like. Right. She is in this movie for about two scenes. It hardly has anything to do with what's going on other than it's the basis for them doing this documentary. Yeah. What it's really about is them trying to piece together whether or not exorcism or whether or not demon possession exists and they want to convince the girl that demon possession exists so they actually have her tag along at an actual exorcism. <laughs> Which that story seemed like it'd make a much more interesting movie. Yeah, um, that's one other thing about true. this movie. This is the luckiest documentary camera crew in the world. Oh yeah, they get into every, they get into <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Yeah. The Vatican, <laughs> like classes on exorcism, <laughs> churches, hospitals, <laughs> mental institutions, right. fucking everywhere right. they can get into right. with no problem right. whatsoever. Right. And, 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 uh, and uh, when they when they first arrived in Rome, he's all like, no communists, no communists. Oh, show him the media pass. It's almost uh, like, uh, that's all he had to do is just show him the media all pass. All right, media all pass, right. Go, go on. Go on. <laughs> just, just keep the camera away from me. Go ahead. Multipass. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And then when, they ask him, then when they ask him to shut the camera off, it's it's only when something horrible has happened. Like right. Someone gets chucked across the room or something like that. Right. Like, this scene's over, all right. Turn the camera off, son. And <laughs> I like the opening scene, too, that says the Vatican does not endorse this movie. Right. Like, I don't think the Vatican knows this movie exists. <laughs> you can seriously attach that in front of almost any movie. Like, I should have attached that at the beginning of Hooker with a Heart of Gold. <laughs> what makes it technically is true. Vatican did not endorse that movie. You, um, you, just, see, uh, you just see the Pope in the theater right now. Oh, no, no. Oh, this is a very good movie. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking... Uh, fuck, not even many critics know this movie exists. Like, we go see this thing, and I, I'm looking online, like, one... There's one critic, at least as of now. There's one critic on Rotten Tomatoes who saw this thing and reviewed it and gave it a positive review. 
So I guess that technically means it's got a 100% on the <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, just wait. This one guy. Just one guy, wait. I think it was DreadCentral.com who saw it. I wonder if it's the same critic who said that 30 Days of Night was the best vampire movie ever made. Um, but that, that guy really liked it. This movie is... is it, not to sound redundant, but this movie is really, really bad. So, you know, and I wasn't... I wasn't mad during it. Like, no. this wasn't like the fourth kind. I mean, that was about aliens, but it's still kind of a possession thing. Right. Like, that That was bad in that it was unwatchable. This one, um, it's got a lot of boring parts in it. God, yeah. But this is one where you can put on this movie at a party, and you will laugh your ass off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, um, it's seriously that kind of movie. There was, uh, alright, so, so let's continue. There, uh, they take her to this, um, um, exorcism and, yeah. and like I said this is the exorcism scene that I thought was really cool you know I thought uh, here's you here you got this woman who's you know all contorted and everything so so kudos to her I saw that and was like okay they found an actress who's double jointed that's cool <laughs> oh that's uh, that's still cool yeah I, I still think that's cool you know well I, um, I wasn't impressed by it I, overall uh -huh. the whole scene overall you know you got her you got her basically going on, on her period, you know, right in the middle of the exorcism. You, uh, you know, in theory, yeah, I do, in theory that scene is fine. I just don't like the fact that it's shot like a documentary. Oh, uh, well... Mm -mm. In, in Yeah, in theory, like, yeah, I can picture that working. Yeah. When, yeah, when it shows that she's having her period during this scene. Like, right. there's your R rating right, right. there. It's the, old, it's the only reason this movie's rated R. Well, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of blood. No more than... No more than a horror film that would get a PG-13. Um, but that, but I didn't think there was that much blood in this movie. Well, well, okay. okay. And then the chick that got... Um, I, I take that back. I mean, I, I, uh, the when the guy blows his brains out, there was, there was that. But that's, like, we're talking, like, two scenes in this movie. Two or three scenes in this movie that have, have a little bit of blood right. in them. Well, it only takes one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um... Mm -hmm. But uh, it, so anyway, so then the scene, uh, so in the scene, the they go through the exorcism, uh, that gets done, and they're all pumped and jive because apparently they, you know, they've they've got some success and they've got it on film, so now they're gonna yeah. go and try it on her mother, and and they do, and the audience was just cracking up, myself included. I, I don't remember, well, when, when, they, so were, when the they were cracking up at, at, uh, at the, um, the, the mother's demon because she was, you know, she and that was, was the scene, that was the whole right. scene. Right, oh, okay. Uh, the mother's demon was a smart ass, you know, it, it, um, the priest was all like, hear me demon, and she goes, I can hear you, the priest, you're the only one talking, or you keep talking. Yeah, and like, I'm gonna cut your tongue out and skull fuck that child killer. <laughs> <laughs> fucking really movie <laughs> uh, and so yeah the mom's eyes are like bloodshot. all bloodshot and she's throwing people across the room and everything and the camera just happens to go like blurry and like kind of cut out when this right. stuff is when this stuff is going on yeah. on the on the yeah on the parts where any it looks like something interesting might happen the camera's like <laughs> like power goes out and right. shit like that all and the lights go out uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they say to the, they say like, oh, she's cured now. We've got this <laughs> demon out of her. And the funniest part is, is they're right, because that's the last time she's in the fucking exactly. movie. Exactly, Like, I'm watching that's this, it. yeah, I'm watching this like... And like, then there's still another half hour of... It turns into a demon transference movie. Like, it seriously, it basically turns into, like, Last Exorcism meets The Hidden. Well, and that's what's so funny about, uh, uh, that's why I call this the foreshadowing within. Because, you know, at the beginning, whenever they're, like, at that, uh, at that class, yeah. that class just said everything. It, it talked about the uh, demon, uh, the multiple... Yeah. Uh, 
the multiple demons, the the demons that you know transfer and everything. So so that's why I called I I even called you that. Caught, you caught that more so than I did. Like I mean, I was I was sort of paying attention in that scene, but it kind of just went in one ear and out the other. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't have remembered that if you hadn't said anything afterwards. It, it's foreshadowing one hundred and one with father exposition. Which is <laughs> that there would be that there would be all that foreshadowing in a documentary. Right. right. <laughs> Right. So there was one guy in that classroom, and this is this is like I said, like to actually watch a real demon demon possession documentary mm -hmm. would be much more fascinating. Yeah. Because that was one of the more interesting parts of the movie, because you have the guy who's in this class who's a skeptic, and is trying to use a logical logical explanations about this video that they're seeing of someone who may or may not be possessed, and he's saying like, well, no, it, it could be this, it could be this, or you know, or it could be something else, and like that, that was, that was, that was fine, and um, I'm watching the scene, and, and I think you were kind of like me, you thought that the, the, the priest in there who was the skeptic was probably going to be the main character, or, or at least play some kind of part in No, he's, that's the only scene yeah. he's in, which I, I sort of, I sort of applaud this movie on, because the skeptical priest is kind of a go has always been kind of a go to thing in exorcism cliche. movies. Yeah, it's kind of been a cliche now in exorcism movies like the skeptical priest and blah blah blah. And they don't do that with this. I mean there's that character, but then he's not in the rest of the movie. So it's about two other characters who totally one hundred percent believe in right. in, in They're they're fashion. basically Ghostbusters. In, yeah. In fact through So Oh go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Well I was gonna say uh, there was uh, a scene where they're showing her around uh, their apartment. They're, I guess they're roommates. They're, they're uh, priests mm -hmm. who are also roommates. And um, and uh, they're showing around their apartment. And, and uh, they're like, oh, we got something to show you. Come here in this room. Yeah. And they've got computers and heart, uh, heart monitors and everything. And they're showing them around. I lean over to him and I go, and this is our containment unit. And yeah. <laughs> Shut this off. Shut this off. <laughs> Man, I wish Walter Peck was in this. <laughs> and then whenever they and then whenever they go in for that uh, first exorcism scene, I, I lean over to to Brad again. And I go, "All right, light him up." <laughs> <laughs> Are you menstruating? <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> so so if I am sort of going to applaud the movie about anything, I I did kind of like that 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 it didn't do like the cliched like skeptical priest kind of thing but um so the movie in the next in the next in the next act of it the last act has the demon passing through that i picked up on because it shows the mother like spit in one of their faces yeah. and at that point i was kind of like i'll bet someone else here is going to get possessed well they said uh, they actually said at the um uh, at the next scene after, whenever they were reviewing the footage, they said that it, um, I guess it was whenever she knocked him back is yeah. when they got when they got transferred. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Well, it, and then it it kind of it goes into that like one priest gets possessed and is giving a baptism and tries drowning a baby, which sounds horrifying. But like most of us in the audience just started. Cracking up because it's done so poorly. Yeah. It's it's done really. I mean, you, you really knew poorly. it. You knew it was going to happen because again the foreshadowing. I, the scene before the scene before the the uh, baptism scene is is that exact priest just giving this like uh, video journal entry and saying, oh, "Okay, well, a baptism is uh, to." Um, yeah. Cure the baby of original sin, blah blah blah, and it and it uh, protects him if he if he dies. Well, next scene is that priest trying to kill the baby. <laughs> well, the cameraman's in there, and it starts going. The camera starts going blurry when something starts happening, and then he puts the camera down, and you see him like rush up to the thing, and and, and so I'm expecting that the, the direction this movie is going to go is that at some point the mom's going to come back into it. Like, at some point, like, they're going to do, like, some more tests on, on the mom and whatnot or something. Because that's what is all over the trailers for right. this fucking movie, is, yep. is that it's going to be about the mom. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so, 
at one point the girl ends up getting possessed and she's in the hospital and her back like bends and shit like that and she kills one of the nurses and they fucking le freely leave the hospital and escape after this has happened and they're riding around in a car with a possessed girl in the back seat. And I saw that in the eerie midnight horror show, and guess what? It worked about as well in this movie that it did in that fucking movie. Eerie midnight horror show is a better movie than this one was. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, and so they're riding around with this possessed girl in the back seat. She just fucking killed someone in the fucking hospital, and just... Pfft, Somehow just got the fuck, they were, just walked right the fuck out, and, and earlier in the fucking movie, when the priest is possessed, and then the cops show up, and like, the cop, one cop goes upstairs, cause that's where the priest is, like, the camera doesn't follow up, uh, follow along with them, and you hear this like kind of thud or like a scuffle or something. And the cop comes downstairs <laughs> and they're like, what happened? He's like, oh man, he, he got he, my gun. He got my gun. <laughs> How the fuck did that happen? We don't know because the camera's down fucking stairs. If this was shot like a real fucking movie, maybe, there, maybe it would have been actually suspenseful. Or we would have seen how the fuck he pulled that off. So he got the cop's gun and... Uh, anyway, um, so, I guess here's where we talk about the ending. Yeah. At this point... So they're in the car. Yeah. They're in the car, the, uh, the possessed girl is in the back seat, right? And there's a struggle in the back seat, and the director's, and the director's driving. By the way, yeah. the car is, uh, is fitted with, with, with uh, these cameras. little cameras. Oh, yeah, they had enough time to turn that shit on <laughs> yeah. when they were escaping from the hospital security, well, I guess. I, I guess, um, it, uh, again, foreshadowing. Um, it, in an earlier scene, they said that the cameras will turn on. When oh, the whenever the car on. turns yeah. on? Oh, all right. Well, all right. I guess that makes sense. But, okay. Um, so... So here they are driving, uh, and and uh, <laughs> so here they are driving, and uh, the, the priest is, I guess, trying to exercise her or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was something about too, like uh, I mean, you seem to have been paying attention to a lot more of the dialogue than I was. Um, there's, there seemed to be something going on with the priest in this, like kind of like the main priest. Yeah. Like, the demon was saying something yeah, to like, him, like, like, like I you wanted you him did. to die. You wanted him to die. I know what you did, or something like that. Was that ever resolved? No, this no, yeah. that was never. That was okay. never really. Here's, here's why it wasn't resolved is because <laughs> the last scene in this movie, and at this point, I seriously thought we were only like an hour into the movie, <laughs> like. I did not think we were in the last act of this thing right. because I thought the climax would have something to do with the mom. Right. So I did not think that we were actually in the last scene of this movie. Um, and it's a 90 minute movie. This isn't like a 70 minute thing. It's, it's at least 90 minutes. And so the driver gets possessed because again, like I said, all of a yeah. sudden it turns into like the fucking hidden. The, all the of demon. A sudden, and, the demon comes out of yeah. the demon comes out of the girl. Goes to the director who's driving. Yeah. The director takes off his seatbelt. Yeah. And, and I guess a lot of people are thinking, oh, he's going to jump out of the car. That's no, what I thought. Uh, yeah. Well, you and and those other yeah. guys that were there, you know. Um. So. They um. You know, we think we're we think he's going to uh, jump out of the car. No, he just goes into uh, drives head on into a truck. <laughs> he drives. There's. I, I. I. I had to think that these people are that the writers for this are sitting at the computer like, "Fuck! I don't know how to end this movie. Uh, let's just have them get in a car accident and die." Right. So, and that's exactly <laughs> what happened. So they get into the. Uh, so literally, what you see is headlights. Yeah. Okay. Then the everybody just uh, falls forward, and yeah. then the camera blinks, blinks yeah. once, blinks twice, blinks three times. And, and, you know, you see people, like, flying, you know, oh, my God, we're, we're um, tumbling around. And then all of a sudden, the camera comes back on, and there's no movement in the car. Fade, and, then, and then, not even a fade, just another blink. 
For more information, go to this website. The audience just <laughs> erupted in laughter. The, and that was it. We, Lights we go all on. just started cracking up like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like, we, we just... Am I going to go to this website and it's going to show me the third act of the movie? Is that where I'm going to see the rest of this thing? You know, like, I, I, I said shit about the ending of Last, Last Exorcism. <laughs> But that was an ending. Like, it, it, at least it, it had a third act. I mean, it, it was... I didn't like the ending. The With The Last Exorcism, if anything, I, I, I wanted it to go on... I wanted the ending to go on more, but I, I knew it was an ending. With this... <laughs> With this, like, it, it seriously felt like just the, the, the last reel of the movie is gone. Right. It's the, just gone, the, so... The crowd reaction was hilarious. Uh -huh. Somebody's yelling, what the fuck? One guy's like, what the fuck was that shit? There's another guy in the back who's like, oh, bullshit. <laughs> Everybody's just laughing. Everyone is just oh, laughing. Oh, man. Oh, the best crowd reaction ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I, I didn't know what to fucking, like, we get out of the theater, and I'm like, well, shit, that was really fucking bad. <laughs> I can't say that I'm, I can't say that I, like I said, there is no fucking way I would, would fucking recommend this movie. <laughs> but I don't know if I necessarily regret my experience in watching it with this audience, who, uh, again, my, us included, just laughed all the way through this fucking movie. This is seriously going to go down as a party bad movie. Mm -hmm. as, as, as a bad movie it's party. It's going to be a flick. cult movie. Yeah, in, in the lowest of possible terms. Because <laughs> it's not a good movie. It's, 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 it's fucking bad. Um, okay, this movie or The Happening? Uh, the Happening, because I don't know if there was ever really a part of The Happening where I thought it was boring. Uh, that's true. Um, but, uh, well, God, what else, do I, what else do I even say about this? Uh, yeah, like, even the parts with the mother where she's, like, kind of freaking out, like, in her room when we first see her. Like, it want, this movie wants it so hard to be creepy. Yeah. But it's just not. Like, she's really... Well, you're talking about whenever she bangs her head up against the wall, but it's all, uh, but it's cut off, so you don't really yeah, see yeah. her. Yeah, yeah, it's showing, it's showing her grab the doctor's head, and like, <laughs> like that, all from the point of view of a security camera. This is all stuff that could work in a movie if it was done right. I've seen it work in movies that did it right. Like, even her her rambling the same sentences, I've, I've seen it done well. But this yeah. movie does not do it well. So, I'm, I'm sitting there most of the time like, what is she saying? Connect the dots? Connect, yeah. the, dots. connect the dots. Connect the she's dots. She's not saying connect the dots. She's saying connect the cuts. Um, because she's oh. talking about the cuts on her hand. I thought... Connect the cuts, connect the cuts. Well, no, because she even asked him. Uh, she even asked uh, the girl, do you know how to connect the dots? I swear to God she's saying connect the cuts. Because she shows her the cuts on right. her arm, and then she says, and then when she says it slower, she's saying, connect the cuts. I swear to God that's what she was saying in this. Mm -hmm. I, I, might be, I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I swear to God that's what she's saying in this. <laughs> and I'm watching this, like, like this is less, this is less, like, Linda Blair, and more like, fucking Brittany Murphy and don't say a word. Like, I'll never tell. <laughs> like, it's like that level of fucking cheesy. Um, so, um, I, I don't recommend seeing this goddamn thing. It's really fucking bad. Not only do I not recommend it, I encourage not seeing it. Cause... I encourage seeing it when you get it, if you can get it on video or DVD. Uh, if, you, if you rent it or if it pops up on the Netflix queue or something like that. I do recommend people getting together and laughing their fucking yeah. asses off at this thing. Don't pay to see it. It'll it, it'll just spawn a sequel. Don't do it. There's not going to be a sequel to this. <laughs> to the devil inside? I mean, worse movies have... Yeah, worse movies have, yeah, worse movies have gotten sequels, but I... I I can't, I can't foresee this movie getting a sequel. I can't, I can't foresee this movie doing well. Well, well, I don't know. Nothing else is opening this weekend. <laughs> it might. 
<laughs> but in my, if nothing else is opening this. Do movie. not go see this movie. Do not do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd rather I, I'd, I'd, I'd rather this get a sequel though than Smurfs. Well, <laughs> if any bad movie, if any bad movie's gonna get a sequel, it's like I don't know, pick this one. At least it was funny. <laughs> Maybe the sequel will be even funnier. <laughs> Maybe, hey, it, hey! If there is a sequel, maybe it'll have the skeptic priest. <laughs> yeah, it'll be about him. Yeah, he was the most interesting character. I know, right? <laughs> he was, the character was a cliche, but he was. Pfft. Um, he, he was better than the girl. The girl was really bad in this movie. Right. <laughs> um, what what trailers did we get in front of this? There was one I thought looked really good. That Elizabeth Olsen one. Where it was like a thriller in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that 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 looked really good. Yeah, yeah. That that seemed a little interesting. Yeah, was, she's a really fucking good actress too. It was um the, they said it was uh, this family um went through a group eighty eight minutes of um, mm. of torture or whatever and w we caught it all in real time. It doesn't look like a found. It's, I don't think it's a found footage movie, but it's. It looks like the movie's done in real time. Yeah. Um, what else do we get? Oh, well, this with found footage that Chronicle. Ir Irving and I got that in front of uh, the sitter. Um, the one the Chronicle. The like the found footage superhero movie. I know that that um, just looks ridiculous. Well, well, actually, what what's um, what I will say about Chronicle is that it looks like that. Um, that there is some of that found footage stuff because it's like uh, those those mm -hmm. boys were uh, like just were making home movies, but there's also some actual movie footage like of him. Um, I could I could there crushing a, sitting there crushing. Yeah, but I couldn't tell because it was the same video quality as it was the same kind of video quality as when they were going around oh. fucking with <laughs> shit. Like oh, they got a nice fucking camera, right? Um, oh, God, oh, some Amanda Seyfried. Uh, Thing that looks like just some like teen thriller or something. It's gonna be the most suspenseful movie since Abduction. The New Underworld. Ow. I just don't fucking give a rat's ass about Underworld. <laughs> it's so uninteresting they might as well call it the Underworld Saga. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll probably still see it for the site even though I only saw the first one. Um, Speed, sir. <laughs> I mean, it's, it'll probably be better than this fucking movie that we just saw. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, I, Might I, actually be fun. Uh, with CGI lichens. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing there. You can't fool me. <laughs> let's, let's cut this movie short. Go, <laughs> go stick a sword through the guy sitting at his, his laptop. He's the one making the effects for this. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember what else um, the trailers we got. Oh, GI Joe. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like it's like they want to they want to apologize so hard for uh, the first for one. for introducing Channing Tatum to the world. <laughs> like we are so sorry that Channing. Here, know. here, here's Bruce Willis. Yeah, here, <laughs> we're so sorry that Channing Tatum was the lead in the last one. All right, here's Dwayne Johnson and here's Bruce Willis. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> Oh man, uh, I actually wanted. I didn't like the first one. Like, I, I didn't I, see the first one yet. It's not very good. No, but like I didn't like the first one, but I kind of want to see the second one. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, Bruce Willis, and I don't know if Channing Tatum's in it, but I didn't see him in the trailer. Well, what was funny was um, uh, while this was I hate, going on, uh, hate Channing Tatum. while this uh, trailer was going on, I, I leaned in and, and I'm like, oh god, this is gonna be bad, and he's like, he's like. What? It's got Dwayne Johnson in it. I go, I know. I no, I said, I didn't say it looked good because oh, it had well. Dwayne Johnson in it. Oh, yeah, the game plan is a masterpiece. <laughs> That's not what I said. I said it might be better because it's got Dwayne Johnson as opposed, to, Chan as opposed to Channing fucking Tatum. All right, sorry. <laughs> I forgot exactly what you said, but yeah, it was along those lines. Anyway, so then I'm just like, yeah, well, I don't like Dwayne Johnson, and then all of a sudden Bruce Willis, and I'm like, Bruce Willis just pops out of a uh, the bed of an El Camino, and I'm like, oh, sold. 
I don't mind it. I, when Dwayne Johnson's in a in a good movie, I I like him. Yeah. I like him just fine. I mean, dear God, his toe jam is more charismatic than Channing Tatum. <laughs> Ugh. But uh, so that's about it. I, that's that's really all I got for for the Devil Inside. It's it's really bad. It's it's la it's laughably bad. Like I wasn't mad. I wasn't mad no. when it was over. I was laughing my ass off. It right. was so fucking bad. Everybody was laughing there. Everyone was laughing. Oh, oh my man. fucking! I I can't remember the last time I was at a movie that was so bad that the audience just laughed. It just just it just ate up how bad it was. Yeah. In the like they were just cracking up throughout the whole thing. I can't. Batman and Robin maybe. That got some laughs uh, when I saw it in the theater, because um, usually when I see, usually when I see a movie like this in the theater that I'm that I'm la that I'm cracking up at because it's so bad, usually I'm like the only one there. Like Devil, like yeah, Devil, Devil was fucking hilarious, but it, that was so was not a packed house. This one was a packed house. <laughs> was um, Devil? I, I that's was... the one. Uh, that's the one that Shyamalan produced and did the story for, even though I'm sure he wrote a lot of it. Uh, where It's um, about the people in the elevator, and one of them is the devil. Oh, God, That movie yeah. was hysterical. Oh, my God, if you get a chance to watch that, totally fucking watch that. At the least, it's like 80 minutes, so mm -hmm. you won't be wasting a lot of time. I cracked my ass, I fucking cracked my ass off at that fucking movie. Hmm. Dude, seriously, if you get a chance to see Devil... You, you made it through the happening. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's a good double feature with the happening, <laughs> and it was funnier. It was funnier than the devil inside. Um, it actually had an ending. It actually had a, it actually had an ending, unlike <laughs> unlike this fucking movie. Um, <laughs> so if you're worried about spoilers, don't worry. There was nothing to spoil. <laughs> Unless the spoiler in of itself is that there was no fucking ending. <laughs> I guess that's that's the spoiler. That's the spoiler. Yeah. Spoiler alert, there is no ending. <laughs> all right. Alright, so uh that that that's that's all I got for this. I'll yep. um I think we're the only two people who aren't at Magfest, so 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 some people will be some people will be checking out this video. <laughs> um Alright, so we'll uh We'll be back uh, with some more movies uh, that we'll check out this weekend, so see ya.